What is Iman? It is something you say. And a confirmation with your heart. And its application with your limbs. It grows with good deed and it goes down with sins. That is Iman. Iman is the statement of Islam. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Something you say with your mouth. And Iman is a confirmation of that statement with your heart. It comes from here. And then you prove it with your actions, not just lip service. And it rises with good deeds. And it falls with sins. Every joy in the life of this world is deficient if Iman is not in the equation. And similarly, every difficulty is manageable if Iman is present in the equation. And that is because Iman has a flavor. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He who is pleased with Allah as his Lord, and Islam as his religion, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his Prophet, will taste the flavor of Iman. Iman has a sweetness, and Iman has a delight that you experience. And how amazing is the situation of one person compared to the next. Both of them will stand side by side praying to Allah Azza wa Jal. Both of them will walk side by side making tawaf around the Kaaba. Both of them will open their fast sitting together in the month of Ramadan. But one person has not yet tasted the sweetness of Iman. And because he doesn't know the sweetness of Iman, that prayer, that fasting, that tawaf is a burden upon him or her. It is difficult for them. And every time a trial comes and afflicts them, every time there is a calamity in their society, they feel themselves weakening. Whereas on the other hand, you have that individual next to the first who looks in outward appearances exactly the same. But what he has in his heart or what she has in her heart is something which cannot be brought. It is something which you cannot apply for. It is not something which you inherit, but rather it is something which Allah Azza wa Jal grants you and bestows you with. And so that second person also prays to Allah. They also open their fast for the sake of Allah. They also go around the Kaaba for the sake of Allah. But for them, it is an enjoyment. For them, they have tasted the sweetness of Iman. And this is why one of the scholars of the past, he would say that we see the kings in their palaces enjoying the treasures of this life. But by Allah, if they knew what we the scholars feel in our hearts in terms of contentment, in terms of peace and security, in terms of tasting the sweetness of Iman, then they would fight us and kill us with their swords in order to gain what we have in their hearts. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there are three attributes, whoever possesses them will taste the sweetness of Iman. What are they? Learn them. Number one, for Allah and His Messenger to become dearer to you than everything else. Number two, to love another Muslim purely for the sake of Allah. Number three, to hate to return to disbelief after Allah had saved you from it the same way you hate to be thrown into fire. How many of us have tasted the sweetness of belief? We say we are believers. We say we are submitters. But sometimes neither have we submitted, nor is our belief up to the level it is supposed to be. When was the last time you felt the sweetness of Iman? Was it last night? Is it now? Or was it a year ago? 10 years ago? When you were a child, when was the last time I felt this deep sweetness of Iman? Where in the night I felt like waking up when everybody else was asleep and I just felt this drive to make me stand alone in the dark with a tiny candle or a tiny light. I don't want anyone to see me. I don't care if anyone sees me or knows what I am doing. I just have this sweetness, this love to get up and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak to Him because I love Him. I feel the sweetness that doesn't leave my heart. It makes me give up my sleep because the sweetness of what I am doing is more beloved to me than my sleep. When was the last time you or I felt this particular sweetness? How do you feel? 
hearing words that soften hearts and refine the soul as you hear Allah said and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said how do you feel in this particular moment hearing something beneficial and compare that to how you feel after you have just finished listening to a musical track or you just finished a Netflix series how do you feel or finished your cigarette how do you feel the difference is enormous iman grows with good deeds and it decreases with sins so ask Allah the exalted to renew the iman that is in your heart and we need to recognize when we started to slip and then we need to take action in order to renew that iman and in order to go back to that state of nearness to Allah that we achieved in certain times and certain days. The greatest of the things that wears away the Iman in the heart are the sins that we do. All of the children of Adam sin. Every day that goes by and you're accumulating and adding up sins and mistakes and disobedience to Allah and being unaware of what you are required to do and leaving off of obligations and this has an effect upon your heart. So the very first thing a person needs to do is to have the habit of constant istighfar and turning back to Allah and asking Allah to accept our repentance. And when you do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleans your heart. The next thing that all of us need to do is we need to ask Allah for his guidance and to ask Allah to renew the iman that is in our hearts and to ask Allah to bring us back to where we were or better than that. And the third thing that we need to do, being attached to the masjid reading a regular portion of the Quran every single day, giving charity, praying the prayer at night and the voluntary prayers, giving more time to our religion and putting our religion first so the person will see the effect of that upon themselves as they go on throughout the days of the year. It is incumbent upon us to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times for indeed, he who is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall be saved. Those who are oblivious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even for a single moment, have lost and perhaps they will have much to lose not only in this world, but even in the life after death. Your savior and mine is by constantly remembering that we are answerable to the Almighty. Everything we do, we should prepare an answer for him. If we have erred, we prepare an answer through tawbah and repentance. And if we have done good, we should ensure that it is done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the blessed style and teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.